Have you ever wondered about the mystical events that led to the submersion of the ancient city of Dwarkanagri? This city holds a special place in Hindu mythology as one of the four holy pilgrimage sites and the legendary abode of Lord Krishna. Nestled in the Kathiawad region of Gujarat near the Arabian Sea, it's a place where the divine and the earthly are believed to have intertwined. But what makes Dwarkanagri truly fascinating is the enigma surrounding its submersion. It's said that 36 years after the epic battle of Mahabharata, this divine city was claimed by the sea. Various mythological tales attempt to explain this mysterious event, spinning a web of intrigue that has captivated generations. What could be the reasons behind the sinking of this divine city? Let's delve into the ancient scriptures to find out. In order to understand the reasons behind the submersion, we first need to explore the establishment of Dwarkanagri. To halt the atrocities committed by King Jarasandha, Lord Krishna, the eighth avatar of Lord Vishnu, made a monumental decision. He chose to leave Mathura, his birthplace and the city he ruled. It was a sacrifice made for the greater good, a testament to Krishna's wisdom and compassion. Lord Krishna journeyed towards the sea, guided by divine providence. There, he established a city, a divine city that was as splendid as the heavens themselves. This city was Dwarka, the gateway to heaven, an abode befitting the god himself. The city of Dwarka was not just a political capital, but a spiritual beacon. It was here that Krishna, the charioteer, the philosopher, the king, and the divine entity lived and ruled. Dwarka was not just an ordinary city, it was a city where divinity and mortality intertwined, where the celestial and terrestrial realms met. The city was a testament to Krishna's divine powers. Every street, every corner, every brick resonated with his divine energy. It was a city of prosperity, righteousness and spiritual enlightenment. It was the city that bore witness to many of Krishna's leelas or divine plays. But this city, this divine abode of Lord Krishna, met with an unfortunate fate. It sank into the sea, disappearing without a trace. This wasn't a natural disaster, a tsunami or an earthquake. It was something more profound, something more divine. It was a city lost in time, a city that became a legend, a city that is now known as the lost city of Dwarka. The city of Dwarka, the divine abode of Lord Krishna, submerged into the sea, leaving behind a mystery that has puzzled historians, archaeologists and devotees alike for centuries. It left behind a question, a question that has echoed through the corridors of time. However, this divine city met an unfortunate end, sinking into the sea. What could have led to such a catastrophic event? One of the reasons believed to have led to the submersion of Dwarkanagri was a curse. A curse that was born out of profound grief and wrath, a mother's heartache over the loss of her hundred sons. This mother was Gandhari, the queen of Hastinapur, and mother to the Kauravas, who were annihilated in the epic war of Mahabharata. Now, Gandhari was a woman of immense virtue and devotion, known for her unwavering loyalty towards her husband, Dhritarashtra, and her steadfast adherence to Dharma. But her heart was heavy with the loss of her sons, and she sought someone to blame for their downfall. And that someone was none other than Lord Krishna. Gandhari held Krishna responsible for the war and the annihilation of her sons. She believed that Krishna, with his divine powers, could have prevented the war and the resulting bloodshed. But he chose not to. He chose to let the war happen, let the brothers fight each other, let the sons die before their mother's eyes. Blinded by grief and anger, Gandhari cursed Krishna. She cursed that just as her sons had died before her, Krishna's clan would also perish. They would kill each other, just as the Kauravas had, and Krishna would have to witness it all, just as she had. Gandhari's curse was not just a mother's lament, but a prophecy of doom, a prophecy that was believed to be so powerful that it could bring about the downfall of an entire kingdom. And so it was believed that Gandhari's curse took effect years later, causing the Yadavas, Krishna's clan, to fight among themselves and perish, just as the Kauravas had. The city of Dwarka, where Krishna had ruled, was said to have been submerged in the sea soon after, forever disappearing into the depths of the Arabian Sea. This curse is believed to have triggered the submersion of Dwarka Nagri. The curse of a grieving mother, the curse of Gandhari, was believed to have brought about the end of an era, the end of the Yadava dynasty, and the submersion of the divine city of Dwarka. The curse of Gandhari is said to have come true, leading to the submersion of the divine city. Dwarka Nagri was not just a city, but a symbol of Lord Krishna's divine power and wisdom. Yet like all things in this transient world, 
it too had to meet its end. According to the ancient scriptures and mythological tales, an astonishing event occurred 36 years after the epic battle of Mahabharata. It was the cataclysmic submersion of Dwarka Nagri into the depths of the Arabian Sea. This was not a mere geological event, but a profound metaphysical moment that marked the end of an era, the Dwapara Yuga, and the beginning of the Kali Yuga, the age we live in now. The submersion of Dwarka did not merely signify the physical destruction of a city, it was a monumental event that marked the departure of Lord Krishna from the earthly realm. It was the end of his divine play, his Leela, which he enacted in the form of a human being. Krishna, the eighth avatar of Lord Vishnu, had completed his mission on earth, the eradication of evil, the establishment of righteousness, the profound teachings of the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. All were part of this divine play. As the city sank, so did the physical manifestation of the divine, leaving the mortal world to its own devices. This event marked the beginning of the Kali Yuga, the age of strife, discord, and spiritual decline. The submersion of Dwarkanagri was a powerful reminder of the impermanence of life and the transient nature of all things material. It served as a stark symbol of the cycle of creation and destruction that governs the universe. Thus, the divine city of Dwarkanagri, once the abode of Lord Krishna, disappeared into the depths of the sea, leaving behind a trail of mystery and intrigue. The story of Dwarkanagri is not just a tale of a city's rise and fall. This divine city, reputedly established by Lord Krishna himself, has left an indelible mark on Hindu mythology. Its legacy is one steeped in divine intervention, heroic endeavors, and profound lessons, shaping the way countless generations perceive their faith and spirituality. Dwarkanagri, despite its submersion, continues to captivate the interest of historians, archaeologists, and religious enthusiasts alike. Its mysterious existence and sudden disappearance has fueled numerous explorations and research, seeking to uncover the city's secrets and validate its mythological significance. The city's tales serve as a reminder of the cyclical nature of life, the inevitability of destiny, and the profound impact of our actions. The echoes of Dwarkanagri's grandeur, its divine aura and its tragic end, continue to resonate within the hearts of believers, inspiring awe and reverence. The story of Dwarkanagri, with its divine origins, majestic existence and mysterious submersion, remains an enduring enigma in the annals of ancient Indian mythology.